Okay, so for this problem, so first, since the center is at their center of the mass, so according to the definition of center of mass, we have mass one times radius one equal to mass two times radius two. So we can know that the ratio relation is R1 divided by R2 is equal to mass two divided by mass one. So for question B, the force between the two stars is the gravitational force, which is the gravitational constant, times the mass of these two divided by the distance between them, which is the sum of this R1 and R2, and this square. So the force is also the centripetal force. So we can use the centripetal equation. So for star one, we have m1, velocity one squared divided by r1. Since the velocity is the circumference divided by the period, we can get the expression of the centripetal force by, okay, we're plugging here, we have four pi squared r1 m1 divided by the period squared. So this one is the force between the two stars. From question one, we know that m1 r1 equal to m2 r2. So here, no matter whether it's r1 m1 or r2 m2, they are equal to each other, okay? So since they have the same force, the numerator is the same, the denominator should be the same. So this should have the same period. Now, since they have the same period, we name it T, and we compare the equation, the left side here and the right side here, we can have, we have M1, M1 get canceled. We have that M2 times T squared equal to four pi squared R1 times R1 plus R2 squared divided by the gravitational constant G. So similarly, we can also have M for M1, we have M1, T squared equal to four pi R2, R1 plus R2 squared divided by G. So we add these two equations together. We have the sum of the mass times T squared equal to four pi squared, the sum of the radius cubed divided by G. And we divide M1 plus M2 on both sides, take the square root, we have the expression of T as shown in the problem. So for question three, we know the velocity, we know the radius, oh, we know the velocity, we know the period, right? So we, and we have this equation that velocity is equal to the circumference two pi r divided by the period so we can find the radius of the two stars. We plug in the number, we have our, the value of our alpha and our beta. Now, we know from this equation, okay, from this equation here, we know the period. Now we know the radius. We can easily find, so we use this equation divided by the period square, we can find that the value for the sum of mass alpha plus mass beta is equal to 3.12 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. And that from question one, we know that the product of mass and radius is a constant. M alpha times R alpha equal to M beta times R beta. So we know the sum of them we can use this expression to find the ratio between them and combine these two equations together, we find mass alpha is equal to 7.8 times 10 to the 29 kilograms, and the mass of beta is 2.34 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. For the last question, let's suppose, we, we can still use the equations about, let's suppose the alpha stand for the star, and the beta stand for the black. So again, we use this equation. Now we know the total mass, we know the period of them, we can find that the sum of the ratio, the distance between the black hole and the star is equal to this expression. 
right? So, okay, so here uh, we missed uh, one over one third because we have a cube here, okay? So this thing times g divided by four pi squared, okay? And we take take the, the, the cube root. Okay, so from this equation, we find this, the value of the distance between them. And again, from question one, we have the ratio. We can use this equation to find the ratio between R1 and R2, uh, R alpha and R beta. Combine these two equations, we find the value of the radius alpha and the radius beta, which is shown here. Once we know the radius, we know the period because it's given. We use this equation. We can find, we use this equation. We can find the velocity of the star is 4.4 .4 times 100 kilometers per second. And the, and the speed of the beta is 77 kilometers per second. 